In today's video, I'm going to be doing a complete speaker installation of my 2017 Toyota 4Runner. This installation video is going to be applicable to all 5th generation 4Runners from the 2010 to present 2020 model year. The system that I'm installing in my vehicle is from OEM Audio Plus. I'll put a link to it in the description below. It's $650 and it's a complete speaker replacement. The great thing about OEM Audio Plus is that they design their system specific to the 4Runner, not only from an acoustic standpoint, but also from a fitment standpoint. So the speakers are the exact same sizes with the same bolt hole placement and the adapters are exactly the same. I've got another video that talks a little bit more about this system. If you wanna check it out, I'll put a link to it in the upper right hand corner as well as the description below if you want to check that out. Now I've already done the installation on the tweeter on the driver's side, the driver's side door, and the rear driver passenger door. And so I want to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison to show you the uh, factory speakers and then the OEM Audio Plus upgrade. So uh, starting off with this speaker here, this is for the rear passenger doors as well as the rear hatch. You can see on the right hand side we've got our OEM speaker, and then on the left-hand side, we've got the OEM Audio Plus speaker. You'll see it's got the carbon fiber cone there, and then it's also got a tweeter, so it's a two-way speaker. Moving over here, these are the woofers that go in the driver's side door and the passenger, front passenger door. Um, and again, you'll see that it's got that carbon fiber cone here. And then moving over to the left, these are the tweeters that go in the dashboard. So again, the exact same uh, size and placement. One other thing to point out about these speakers is they've got a neodymium magnet, which basically uh, provides better performance and output in a smaller, lighter weight size. Helps to uh, create this perfect fitment for the OEM setup without increasing the size of the speakers. All right, now the tools that you need for the installation are pretty basic. One tool that they do recommend that I don't have is a plastic trim remover. Uh, will help to easily remove the trim pieces in your vehicle without scratching them or damaging them. Um, I found on the driver's side that I was able to use a really small flathead screwdriver and be very careful, again, that you don't scratch um, any of those edges. Also recommend that you have a larger uh, flathead screwdriver, helpful for prying off some of the speakers. And then you also wanna have a Phillips head. Now, you want this to be magnetic and you want it to be a little bit longer because a couple of these screws are in there pretty deep. And so to get them out, you can unscrew them, but then to get them out, you need that magnetic piece. This is not magnetic. So I'm using my drill to help out with that portion. And then you also need a socket wrench with a 10 millimeter socket. So removing the tweeter is again, super easy. This little plastic piece on here just gently pries up. So again, you'll wanna use that pry tool or the flathead screwdriver if you're like me. Uh, just gently lift this up and then we'll have access to the speaker to remove it. Once that cover's removed, the next step is to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts. I already loosened them slightly. Make sure you remove these two not the two that sit next to them. So pull that off, pull this off. And then this tweeter will lift up. You'll see we've got a connection here. I'm just gonna gently push in on this little clip here and it will pull out. Once we connect this electrical connection, you'll see we've got these two little plastic clips on the bottom, which line up with these two inserts in that lower plate. So we'll pop that into place. And then we'll reinsert the two 10 millimeter bolts. Once you've hand tightened those bolts, tighten them slightly with a socket wrench, and we'll put this cover back on with that little angled piece down toward the window insert the clips into the holes starting over here where my left hand is work your way down the window and then to the a pillar and then just gently push the cover back down and that install is complete all right so starting on the front passenger side we've got to remove this little piece here this little plastic insert behind this handle as well as this little piece here. Now this is where you wanna use that trim removal tool. I'll be using the flathead screwdriver and basically you're just gonna gently pry each of these out. These two will stay connected and this one will pop right out. And then once we get these three out, we've got three Phillips head screws that we'll need to remove. All right, so here's the plastic piece that you remove behind the handle here. To get that out, you wanna just pull the handle out slightly. And then you'll see this little flap here with the Phillips head behind and then down below here as well. You can see these two are in here pretty deep, so that's where it's helpful to have that magnetic head on the screwdriver to be able to pull those out. So now that I've got those three exposed, I'm gonna pull those three bolts 
And then the next step is that we're gonna very gently uh, just kind of pull the whole perimeter of this door out. So we've got little plastic clips that are going through. Um, so they will pop out, you just have to do it really gently. Uh, the key is to do the sides and the bottom first and then get up to the top and do that, la that step last. <laughs> Also forgot to mention that you want to take this piece off first. So again, that gently just pulls off. And then once we've got that off, we've got all these lower clips out. So these clips just go in straight again. So we'll just gently pry this out. All right, so you can see we've got the door panel removed here, but we've got a couple connections that need to be disconnected. First up, we've got the connection here for the door handle and door lock, white on the top, green on the bottom. You want to remember that when you put it back together. And basically, these guys just pull out. Okay, so you pull that out, and then you'll see this little ball in there just comes loose. It's pretty easy to do, but a little tricky to hold a camera and do at the same time. So we've got those disconnected. And then down below here, we've got just a little electrical connection that needs to pry off. I don't think I can do that and hold the camera, but you'll just disconnect that. And then up top here, same thing. We've got this little plastic piece that we just push on and pull out and we'll disconnect that. Maybe I can do this one at the same time. Push in right there. And then pull it out. And with that, the door panel is disconnected. Now I want to set this down on the bottom so we don't scratch the inside. And then coming on the speaker here, you'll see we've got four 10 millimeter bolts and then electrical connection that will detach. All right, so now that we've got those four bolts off, we're just gonna take the flat head and gently pry it behind the speaker. Basically, we've got a little bit of foam padding back behind that's kind of holding it in there. And you see it pulls right out, okay? So then we'll set this one aside. We'll grab the new OEM Audio Plus speaker and we'll reinstall it in the same fitment. All right, so with the new speaker, we're just gonna line it up with those existing holes. You'll see that it fits just fine. No need to make any additional cuts or modify anything. And we'll take our four bolts, put them in by hand, and then we'll kind of go in a star motion to tighten it so that we don't end up with like one side really tight and the other side really loose. And then we'll also take the electrical connection here, pop that in place. Certainly don't want to forget this step. Makes this system super easy that it's just perfect fit, man. But that's the thing that attracted me most to it. So it's a super easy install. And then we don't want to over tighten these. Just want to get it kind of a little bit tight, but not a overly tight. Uh, next step is we've got to grab that door panel again and before we put it back in we want to make sure that we connect to this connection, this connection, and then again these two making sure we leave the green on the bottom, white on the top. Okay once we've got all of those connected we want to push in this top piece first and then we'll push in the bottom. Push progressively across the top until you hear it snap into place. And then likewise, we'll just go down the sides, push the sides in place, and then we'll get the bottom last. Just like that, it's installed. So then we've got to reinstall these three screws that we had. The thing I love about this installation 
is that it's just as easy as the instructions make it look. All right, so now for the rear passenger doors. This installation is nearly identical to what we saw on the front doors. We've got the same three pieces that need to remove. Uh, so we'll pry these off, remove those three Phillips head screws. Then we will remove the door panel by gently pulling along the sides and the bottom of the door, uh, then pulling out the top. We've only got one electrical connection here uh, for the power window, and then we've got the two connections for the door lock and door handle. Otherwise, it's gonna be nearly the same as what we saw on the front doors. And then the speaker is also slightly different, and it's only got the three bolts versus the four that we saw on the front doors. All right, so with the tweeters installed as well as the front doors and rear doors, the last step is to do the rear hatch. The rear hatch isn't all that different from what we saw up front. First step was we've got to remove this little cover at the grab strap. There's a 10 millimeter bolt under that. And then we've got to remove this uh, plastic light cover. Again, we're gonna use that little pry tool or the screwdriver to gently pull that out. Same over here on the driver side. Um, once we get those both pulled out, then you're going to disconnect the electrical connection, pull those fixtures out, and then the whole panel removes just like the doors did, pulling at the bottom and the sides and then the top last. Now one quick tip for the rear hatch to make it a little bit easier. I thought that the installation was gonna be the same back here that we saw on the doors up front where you're basically yanking outward and there's little clips that insert. On the rear hatch, it actually rests on this little lip at the top. So you're not actually pulling it out, you're just lifting it up over that. So I was pulling it unnecessarily. Let's see if we look at the top here. Just this little plastic edge that rests on there. So be careful when you're removing that. Don't yank on it, just lift it up and it'll just easily pop right off. Uh, once we've got that off, we can see the two rear hatch speakers we've got here. A uh, little electrical connection up here at the top. We'll just wanna push on that and pull it out. And then we've got the three bolts to remove. Uh, remove it, reinstall the new one. And then likewise, we'll do the same thing over here. Just connect this electrical connection and remove the three bolts, put in the new speaker. Pretty easy there. Uh, once we've done that, then we'll just put it back together We took it, the way we took it apart, um, putting the top piece on first and then pushing in the clips, starting on the sides and then the bottom last. With that, the speaker installation is complete, and as you can see, it's an incredibly easy installation to do on your own. Of course, the thing that made the installation so easy was the OEM Audio Plus system. There's no need to make any cuts for wires, encasements for the speakers, or to drill any holes. Highly recommend considering this system if you want to simplify the installation. With the OEM Audio Plus system, I would recommend this install to even a very novice installer. If you have any comments or questions on the system or the installation, feel free to leave them in the section below. To stay up to date on what I think about the actual performance of the system, as well as for additional videos of the fifth generation 4Runner, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.